Ugh, our freaking ears. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we'll be counting down our picks for the top 10 notoriously bad singing performances in movie musicals. Before we begin, we publish new content every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. For this list, we're taking a look at movie stars that might be able to act, but whose singing voices left audiences reaching for earplugs in these films. We're not saying we think these actors are bad, or even that the movies themselves are bad, but that we understand why many consider their musical performances to be less than adequate. Whoa, <laughs> somebody should find that poor animal and put it out of its misery. Number 10, Everyone, Lost Horizon. After The Sound of Music became the highest grossing film of its time, Hollywood dished out several rip-offs. Oh, help. Lost Horizon is widely considered to be the film that killed this trend, earning the nickname of Lost Investments. Where The Sound of Music managed to blend corniness with genuine charm, this musical is a stale cornball that misses the most important mark, quality singing. The cast, which includes usually reliable names like Peter Finch and Liev Ullmann, sing like they took happy pills before shooting, which is odd since the plot revolves around a plane crash. The world is a circle without a beginning and nobody knows where it really ends. Where the original Frank Capra film won two Oscars, this remake was listed in the book The 50 Worst Films of All Time. Let me show you just how I became an educated man. Number 9, Everyone, Repo the Genetic Opera. This horror musical is so disgusting, disturbing, and depraved that it's actually developed a cult following akin to the Rocky Horror Picture Show. How about that? Calling the film so bad it's good is probably the highest compliment someone can give Repo, however. To be fair, the cast isn't completely tone deaf. Sarah Brightman and Anthony Stewart Head are both charismatic singers who give it their all here. <laughs> Everyone else, meanwhile, sounds like they're sleepwalking through each bleak, brooding number. And when the gun goes off, it sparks and you're ready for surgery. Even Paul Sorvino, an established opera singer, seems to leave his talent at home. It's nice to see young talent blooming. The film also includes a Razzie-winning performance from Paris Hilton, who further demonstrates that she really doesn't belong in movies, let alone movie musicals. Sometimes I wonder why Number 8, Clint Eastwood, Paint Your Wagon. Paint Your Wagon? A cowboy musical? Nobody's coming to this. Yes, well, it's Coach Franklin's favorite film. Lee Marvin and Clint Eastwood, two of the biggest names in the Western genre, finally came together in Paint Your Wagon. And how did these two gunslinging badasses spend their time? Singing for over two and a half hours, of course. The Simpsons probably summed up this old-fashioned campy musical best. We ain't bragging, we're gonna coat that wood. We're gonna paint that wagon, we're gonna paint it good. They ain't bragging, they're gonna coat that wood. <laughs> It'd be one thing if Marvin and Eastwood could actually sing, but that's sadly not at all the case. Uh, was born under one star. Eastwood in particular has been criticized for his bitter singing voice, which is about as appealing as fingernails on the chalkboard. Then I got gold fever. Eastwood is an artist of many different talents, but there's a reason why the trees and stars would rather not listen to him. But suddenly my words reach someone else's ear. Had someone else's heartstrings too. Number seven, Tom Cruise, Rock of Ages. You got the beats, I got the dreams. This rock jukebox musical was one of the most hyped stage to film adaptations of the early 21st century, with Tom Cruise's star power being one of the marketing campaign's driving forces. You should do it with the upcoming Warner Brothers movie Rock of Ages based on the hit Broadway musical, rocking a theater near you June 15th. Tom Cruise sings. Cruz plays Stacy Jacks, a rock and roll god slowly fading into obscurity. I've seen a million faces, to his credit, Cruz is actually quite convincing as a musician who spent most of his time boozing, partying, and rocking out. 
what he lacks are the vocal chops to really pull the persona off. I wanna feel what love is. I know you can show me. Cruz reportedly spent five hours a day preparing for this role, and it's apparent that he's trying his best. Trying is the key word, though, as Cruz's limited voice never makes the crowd go wild. Axl Rose, he ain't. No. When I'm done, we literally need to burn this place to the ground. Otherwise, the fire phoenix gets trapped. Number 6. Emma Watson, Beauty and the Beast Little town, it's a quiet village Every day, like the one Watson divided many with her portrayal of Belle in Disney's live-action remake of Beauty and the Beast. Some felt that she captured Belle's independent, understanding, and well-read nature to a T. Others argued that she was basically just playing Hermione Granger for the ninth time. One thing almost everyone seems to agree on, however, is that Watson's singing voice can't hold a candle to Paige O'Hara's in the 1991 animated classic. I want adventure in the great white somewhere. Between these two actresses, it's pretty obvious which one was born to be on Broadway. Nonetheless, there's no denying that this remake was an overall hit. New and a bit alarming. Who'd have ever thought that this could be? Number 5. Rex Harrison, Dr. Doolittle. Rather than singing in the traditional sense, this English actor was better known for talking on pitch. With his performance as Professor Henry Higgins in My Fair Lady, Harrison got away with his style of singing because his sardonic delivery fit the character perfectly. The sort who never could, ever would, let an insulting remark escape his lips. Sadly, the same can't be said about his performance as the titular protagonist in Dr. Doolittle. I'm a devoted vegetarian. Harrison is so flat and disinterested in the role that you can never tell when one of his songs even begins. If you could talk to the animals, learn their languages, maybe take an animal degree. The fact that Harrison can't sing made it all the more infamous that Leslie Bricus's Talk to the Animals won the Academy Award for Best Original Song, beating out the bare necessities. Look for the bare necessities, the simple bare necessities. Forget about your worries and your stress. Number 4. Cameron Diaz, Annie. Depending who you ask, Annie is either a timeless classic or a rather dated schmaltzfest. But no matter where you stand, the 2014 film adaptation of the Broadway musical is generally viewed as a misfire. The movie is full of questionable casting choices, but none raised more eyebrows than Cameron Diaz as Miss Hannigan. This cruel caretaker is typically depicted as old, grungy, and washed up, which aren't exactly words we'd use to describe the beautiful Diaz. Little girls, little girls, everywhere I turn I can see them. Aside from being painfully over the top in the role, Diaz's singing voice sounds incredibly forced and unpolished, especially when compared to her predecessor Carol Burnett. Little girls, little girls, everywhere I turn, I can see them. Ironically, Diaz's intentionally bad singing for My Best Friend's Wedding was arguably a step up. I'm so used to do. Number 3. Russell Crowe, Les Miserables Believe it or not, this Oscar-winning actor had aspirations to be a musician before hitting it big in Hollywood, releasing several singles throughout the 80s. That being said, it's evident why Crowe found fame on a set and not in a recording booth. Crowe's turn as Javert in Les Miserables is perhaps the most notable example of his lackluster singing skills. And I'm Javert! Do not forget my name! Critics and audiences largely found Crow's portrayal to be dull and lifeless. Come to think of it, every time Crow opens his mouth, it sounds like he's yawning before taking a nap. This I swear, this I swear by the stars. Having to share the screen with seasoned singers like Hugh Jackman and Anne Hathaway only draws more attention to Crow's problem. Number 2. Gerard Butler, The Phantom of the Opera Michael Crawford won a Tony Award for originating the titular role in Andrew Lloyd Webber's The Phantom of the Opera. 
Crawford was set to reprise the part when Warner Brothers purchased the film rights in 1989, but the picture was in development hell for so long that the filmmakers eventually turned their attention to Gerard Butler. My power over you grows stronger yet. The Scottish actor possessed next to no musical experience and only had four singing lessons before auditioning for Weber. Nevertheless, director Joel Schumacher was convinced that Butler could pull it off, based on his performance in Dracula 2000. Butler had a harder time convincing audiences, though, as his singing failed to hit any high notes, both figuratively and literally. Let your soul take you where you long to be. Before we get to our top pick, here are a few dishonorable mentions. Luck be a lady what would I do if I could reach inside of me? Finally knowing the one that I wanted was yours. Number 1. Pierce Brosnan, Mamma Mia. This film adaptation of the jukebox stage production brought together a star-studded ensemble. Unfortunately, not every cast member can carry a note, and Pierce Brosnan's singing voice is by far the biggest letdown. It used to be so nice, it used to be so good. To say that Brosnan sounds like an amateur on karaoke night would be kind. It feels as if the lyrics are fighting to exit his mouth. Even critics who enjoyed the film generally agree that Brosnan's the last person who should be in a musical. There's no hurry anymore when I and done. For his laughable performance, the Irish actor received a Razzie for Worst Supporting Actor. Brosnan can, of course, be a very likable actor, but Donna clearly should have said, I don't. And you know it. Say I do. I do. Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from Ms. Mojo and subscribe for new videos every day.